Hi, this is Lisa Reavers, University of Minnesota Master Gardener, and I know that you were thinking now that farmer seed is gone and last month is over with that you won't see me anymore. Alas, we're doing gardening time at the library this year. So what we want to do is I want to take you on a little bit of a tour. This is the east side of the library. So you can see the parking lot, the main parking lot is over there. And then this is the side parking lot. And this retaining wall is our vegetable garden. This is the fourth year that we've been doing this. And I want to show you a couple things because I'm sure there are a few of you thinking, why aren't they doing anything about that? So it is the venomous dandelion that everybody hates. These were actually imported from England because they were such a pretty flower. They are not native here, but they've been here for so long that they've been grandfathered in. And if you can tolerate them enough to let them bloom, and then once they get to something looking something like this, and it goes to seed, pop these off so you won't spread them. And then you can either dig them out or spot weed them with some sort of a, a, a herbicide if you feel that you want to go that way. Um, instead of doing just a full weed and feed on your yard, this way you're targeting exactly what you want to get rid of and you're not going to be putting on chemicals that are not needed. So there is other, there are other benefits to this besides just being a pretty flower. Okay, so other than being just a pretty flower, the greens, when they first come out and before there's been any type of a flower formed, these greens can be used in a salad. The root itself is used for medicinal, medicinal purposes. Let me see if I can get that out. Um, and is usually used for a diuretic. As you can see in the picture, you can also take the blooms off and make a tea out of them and or dandelion wine. So there is a really good reason that you can keep these in your yard and it actually shows a better health for your yard than just a green carpet. And who would have thought that I would have brought the bees into this? The dandelion is actually one of the first pollinating flowers for all of the bees to come out. Um, we do have over 400 native bees. And if you take a look at some of these, they are what we consider to be flies, but there is some native bee active at every part of our spring to fall time of year. Now, some of these bees aren't out the whole year. Sometimes they're only gonna be active for a month or two months, and others are active for the full season. So if you decide that you want to help out the bees a little bit, I also have information here, plants for bees for Minnesota. As you can see, our bumblebee is here. We've got 23 of those in the United States that um, help us pollinate. They're one of the biggest pollinators for tomatoes. Um, and then if you think, oh yeah, this is extremely interesting, I want to plant for them, We've also got this handout. This is available at the library if you want to take a look at this. We have both of these available um, in the Garden Information Center. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me. For people that were interested in a shrub, we have different symbols on there for the shrub. So this is May, and it's still cloudy, but you're going to be looking at this in June. So we are hoping that it will be abundantly warm and very sunny. Um, except for the rain dates so that we can get our prescribed rain for our plants. Um, I am actually planting cloudy days, a little cooler, are good days to get your plants in. I would suggest that you get all of your planting done by about June 10th. So once you get them planted in June and the, the roots have actually taken into the soil, that helps them get through the uh, dog days of summer. Um, the different times during July when we don't seem to get a lot of water. But I also want to show you something that we're doing here at the library that helps us keep our weeds down. So here you can see that I do, yes, have cardboard down and then I have straw over it. 
Now what this will do is it will actually be a weed retention um, because you're suffocating anything that might be under here. It's also helping you to contain moisture in the soil and at the end of the growing season when you pull the straw aside and look at the cardboard you're going to notice that there are a lot of earthworms that are really loving this cardboard. Now any type of a paper product is considered a carbon instead of um, say a nitrogen or other type of chemical. When carbon breaks down, it actually takes nitrogen from the soil and throws the carbon. That would be any kind of a paper, that would be the, um, the cardboard. So as I laid this down, I actually put some nitrogen in between the layer of the, the cardboard and before I put the straw down. So that way, the nitrogen needed for the breakdown of the cardboard, um, it'll all be available to it and it won't take it from the soil and take it away from the plants. But as you can see, you know, there are gonna be areas that peek through and the weeds do get through, but it's so much easier to do it this way because you've got a mass area that you don't have to worry about. When I do plant, then what I'll do is I'll go down to the carbon cardboard layer, I'll take a little bit of a hole out of it, and then I will plant it. And you've got all sorts of wonderful um, a barrier to the weeds. So we are on the east side as you can see and this is the walkway in between our um, water outlet here and our sidewalk and here I've actually done cardboard with a black weed barrier. Um, I didn't want to use the straw here simply because I'm not growing anything in the ground here and I can always fertilize it a little bit later but I wanted to have a good weed free area for the bales and yes this is straw bale gardening and it is still May and these poor guys were just planted yesterday but they will come back and they will I put some soil in there and then um, once the roots outgrow the soil the straw around it will be decayed enough so that it will get nutrients out of the straw. So we have another pathetic little tomato here. I'm hoping that we will get some of the onions to come out here. Last year we had the same thing as far as a lot of rain in May and I, I planted potatoes so we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed and hope that they did not rot out. And if they did, I have some plants to put in there just in case. But this is all a learning experience for me as well. I tend to be more of a flower gardener. So this has really stretched me as far as what I know, what I, I dig into for a different type of research and information. Then we have this silly looking thing. These are all of the straw bales from last year. And if you remember, this whole area with straw bales. So I didn't want to just throw that away because there's so many nutrients that are in the straw bales. So now they are going to feed the, the other plants that I have in here and different things that I have planted by seed. All of this is available nutrients for the plants because they had to take the nutrients out of the soil to grow and become straw and stems and once they break down, that's what they're gonna give back to the soil. And so I'm trying to go as chemical, actually there are no chemicals used at all in our gardens here. And I wanna show you one more spot before we, uh, we close out for this month. So before I let you go, I wanted to point out one other area at the library that you're probably wondering what we're doing here as well. This is actually going to be a clover bee lawn area. So um, all of the dandelions are welcome. Um, you'll see that it's mostly clover. I do have some other things in here, creeping thyme. Um, I actually have some leftover volunteer seeds from when we had straw bales here. And depending upon when they actually sprout, um, I'm gonna let those stay. We have some other items in through here. These are just gorgeous little flowers. And I gotta tell you, I have no idea what they are. Um, didn't get that looked up before we came over. Um, 
But anything with a flower at this point in our season is so extremely, extremely important for any of our bees. Uh, they are in crisis and we want to be able to do as much as we can to help them out, which also brings us to a bee hotel. You can tell if there's been a bee if this is covered up and it could be covered up with a leaf from a leaf cutting bee or pith which is the um, the center of a stem and what they'll do is they'll pack it in here and then depending upon what type of bee um, it'll emerge and there are probably about six to eight different small cells and it doesn't seem to make sense to a lot of people about our native bees but our native bees do not hive the only one that actually was here before we came was the bumblebee and they hive up to about a hundred bees and it can be in the ground and it could be on top of an area that you've let go a little bit wild um, but then they don't overwinter. What happens is at the end of the season, one of the bees takes off because she knows she's gonna be the queen for next year. She goes out and mates, and then she will actually hibernate um, until about this time of, of year or when it gets warmer. Um, she, she'll go out and she is bigger because she's gonna be the queen of the hive. And she goes out and she forages, she gets the pollen and the honey, builds her little um, cells in her tiny little hive um, not as clean as a honeybee or uniform, but uh, they're just really big, fuzzy flying bears. They're a very calm, calm so bee. So our native bees will actually go into the soil. Um, they will dig. Some of them actually are called digger bees. Um, they will go into crevices that they find. They will take the stems of plants that you haven't cleaned all the trash out of your yard. Don't worry. Leave those stems up and let them stay up through the end of next year because when the bees find them and she makes her little nest, if we take all the trash out of our garden, then those nests are all lost. And she'll, she'll lay probably, you know, between six and 10, and then she leaves. And the, the, um, the babies are left to um, hatch next year. And so there's, something always going on around us in the yard and you just need to stop and smell the dandelion if you will and just know that our bees are basically our food for anything that needs pollination and when they decrease our food supply is going to hurt so with that I will end our uh, June session of gardening time at the library. Thank you for tuning in.